in the last episode we started our story of photography when it is started who were the inventors and the pioneers what were the properties of chemicals that intrigued artists and photographers in the 17th and 18th century and finally how kodak came up with the first camera that allowed the mass of people to capture and preserve the present now today we are going to continue the same and discuss how a photograph is developed in our age starting from black and white film photography first step how do we develop a negative the first question is how do we develop a negative in short it starts with a photographic film which consists of a translucent polyester base on one side of which there is a coating of gelatin which contains microscopic particles of silver halide and when we say halide it means it can be any silver salt with halogens but mostly silver chloride or silver bromide is used in some cases it can be silver iodide now from the previous episode we know that how silver chloride converts to metallic silver when exposed to light and eventually turns black now here we are going to get into more details when silver chloride is exposed to light it takes the energy from the light because of which it converts to metallic silver now this energy is actually directly proportional to the frequency of light and if we write the equation it becomes e is equal to h nu where h is the planck's constant and nu is the frequency of light but anyway for now our concern is the energy imparted from light to silver chloride depends directly on the frequency of light falling on it and as we know out of all the seven colors of light the red light has the minimum frequency and the violet color has the maximum right and depending on this we can say that violet will give maximum energy and as we go up on the scale the energy imparted by the light reduces hence for the light with more energy the formation of silver will be more and vice versa that's why we obtain different shades for different colors on the film now this is the technical aspect of the photographic film moving further to how does a camera capture the image at first the photographic film is placed at the back wall in such a way that the film which is capturing the image should face the incoming light but before getting into image formation we need to know about some of the construction aspects of a camera right now we need to focus on three parts first a lens second a plane mirror and third a shutter first let's talk about this plane mirror it is kept inclined at an angle just in front of the shutter and what is its purpose the light coming from the object reflects from the mirror which is again reflected by another mirror on the top and finally reaches our eyes and this is the point from where we can see the objects and adjust the focus so that we can get a clear image of what we are trying to capture moving on to the next step when we click the outer button the mirror is lifted up and the shutter rolls upward and this is when the photographic film is exposed to the light coming from the objects now according to the intensity of light falling on the film the image is captured on the film in different shades of gray after that the mirror and the shutter roll back to their initial positions and all this happens in a blink of an eye trying to appreciate the technology right now one thing to notice here is 
Since the film is exposed to light for a very less time, the silver chloride particles don't completely convert to metallic silver. Instead, they get unstable or dissociate into ions. And that's why the shades are not very prominent and differentiable just after exposing it to light. So now is the time and the need to take it to the photography lab to make the picture and shades clear so that we can get a print of the image. But first of all, one question. Why are the lights of laboratory red? I am not going to answer it now. Scratch your head. If you have carefully watched the video from beginning, you can answer it yourself. Drop the comments and I'll answer it there. Coming back to the photographic process. First, the negative is dipped into a developer solution. Now what is a developer solution? It is basically a weak reducing agent. Let me explain. Since the photographic film is exposed for a very less time, the silver chloride particles don't get enough time to convert completely to metallic silver but they get unstable depending on the frequency of light falling on it. Now when it comes in contact with the developer solution, all the unstable microscopic particles of silver chloride undergo a relatively fast reaction and reduce to metallic silver. So basically, the work of the developer solution is to reduce down unstable silver chloride particles to silver particles. But here we have a problem. If the film remains in the developer solution for long, it starts reducing the unaffected silver chloride as well, which can distort the image. And we need to stop that. So after the image is prominent, we take the film out of the developer solution and place it in a stop bath, which is generally a weak acid. Now the job of this stop bath is to stop the action of developer solution remaining on the film. After a while, the film is now finally placed in a fixer solution, which is generally ammonia, which dissolves all the silver chloride particles and the metallic silver remains as it is on the film. And this is what we call a negative. Now, if you observe carefully, the areas where the intensity of incoming light was very less will have almost no silver particles. And in addition to that, there are no silver chloride particles as well at these places because it has been washed out by the fixer solution. So these areas will become translucent and the areas where we have maximum intensity of light will have the black particles of metallic silver. Now comes the final step, printing of the image. The photographic printing paper is not an ordinary paper. This paper also contains a layer of the light sensitive silver halide on one side. Talking about the steps, first we need to enlarge the image and it is done with the help of an instrument which is generally called as enlarger. Now this instrument consists of a holder where we place the negative, a light source and a convex lens to form an enlarged image. Now when we turn the light source on, the rays pass through the negative first and then to the lens which forms a magnified image on the photographic paper. And if you are understanding the process well, you should have figured out by now that the translucent areas will pass more light and the areas where we have more black particles will pass less light. So actually, there will be the reversal of shade on the paper. How? More black areas on the negative will pass less light and the translucent areas will pass more light. So the black areas on the negative are going to form a bright shade on the paper and a dark shade will be formed for the translucent areas, right? And now is the time when we have to develop the image. So again, the same process. First, the developer solution to reduce the unstable silver chloride to metallic silver. Then we dip the paper in the stop bath to stop the developer action and then to the fixer solution to wash out 
the unaffected silver halide. And finally, we get a beautiful black and white photograph on the paper. Now if you notice, we have got a reversal of image from negative to the original photograph. So this is all about black and white photography. Now the question is, how do we produce a colored photograph? And that we are going to discuss in the next video. So I would say it will be helpful if you please subscribe to the channel. And till we meet again, till the next episode, stay safe, take care and thanks for watching.